In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, the intuition behind the mathematics for generating estimates in a regression. In our previous videos, we covered OLS regression where we generate estimates such that the sum of squared errors is minimized. And this graph over here talks about how if we plot potential estimates, let's say on the x-axis and the, the total error or the sum of squared errors on the y-axis, we try to figure out at what point or at what value of the estimates does uh, the, the sum of squared errors get minimized. And that value at which the, the error is minimized is typically the, the value of the estimate which the regression which then outputs. But how do we actually figure this out working in, in real and what's the intuition behind it? So I'm going to talk about uh, using Excel Solver to demonstrate uh, generating OLS estimates and what the whole uh, matter of uh, minimizing uh, the squared estimates uh, looks like. So I'm going to look at uh, the, the car sales data set again and we're going to start off with a very simple model. So I'm going to try and fit uh, miles per gallon as uh, the dependent variable and fuel capacity as the independent variables. So let's copy this out to a separate tab and let's work with this. As we know in, a, in a, any regression model we have the intercept and then we have the estimate or the beta 1 against the, the individual variable. So I'm going to try and fit in a model which is the predicted uh, miles per gallon based on a very simple regression model but we don't have the intercepts or we don't have the estimates yet so let's put in some random value over here so I'm going to start off with intercept of 10 and a estimate against fuel capacity of let's say 5 so what does my equation become it becomes equal to uh, the, the regression equation is simply y is equal to mx plus c where the constant or the intercept is 10 over here. I'm just going to lock this so that I can drag the formula down plus 5 times into the fuel capacity. So, so my predicted miles per gallon is coming out to be 76, which is ridiculous, but it's fine. We're just going to start off with these values over here. And this is where I just drag the formula down. Since it's locked, it should stay over here. I am multiplying the values of each of the variables correctly. Now let's calculate the, the sum of squared error term over here or we'll first have to calculate the squared error and then sum it up. The squared error is simply the difference between actual minus predicted or it can be predicted minus actual squared. It doesn't matter because we are squaring it. So this is the squared error and if I calculate the sum of squared errors over the whole data set, I simply sum it up and there we go. So our sum of squared errors is coming to be some arbitrary value over here. Sorry. And what we can do now is the objective, as I explained earlier, we're going to try and estimate the, the regression such that we minimize the sum of squared error. And I'm going to keep intercept as constant. So what value of, of uh, the estimate against fuel capacity minimizes the sum of squared error? So we have got value of 5 over here. And let's try and graph the various uh, estimates that we get and the sum of squared errors that we are getting for them. So let's say for 5, we are getting 963,000 as the error. So let me copy it correctly. And this is the value for 5. What happens if I change the estimate from 5 to 6? Will it go up or go down? So let's look at that. I change it to 6 and it seems to have gone up a little. And if I change it to 7, does it still go up? It does seem to go up. So let's look at it over here. And we've got 7 over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot this on a scatter diagram so it becomes easy for us to visualize. So in this particular scatter diagram that I've generated, we've got the sum of squared errors plotted on the y-axis and the estimates on the x-axis. So as I keep increasing the estimate, the, the, uh, the error keeps going up. So what happens if we go the other way around? So we already have covered 5, 6, and 7. Let's try the value for, let's say, minus 5. 
and it comes out to be 1.68 million so let's see and this is minus 5 so it goes over here so it's still going up let's try minus 4 and I see and I think it's gone down a little there we see it so it's going down so as I see it's going up as I increase the value from 5 to 10 and it's going up again as I increase the negative side of the value from minus 5 to minus 10 let's try somewhere around the middle let's try let's try around uh, 0 itself what happens if uh, there is no relationship in fuel capacity in miles per gallon and in fact it comes much lower for 0 it's coming very very low so let's try another value let's try 1 at 1 I see that the value has come even lower let me just make it a little simpler to to look at and going to ignore the value so as you can see at 1 the value is almost 11,283 let's try with 2 with 2 it seems to have risen up let's try minus 1 then again with minus 1 it's going up a little so what we see over here is we see this u kind u shape convex function and this is called a convex function because uh, uh, any line that we draw can at most uh, you know intersect this uh, this shape of this value or this function twice not more than twice and minimum if of course at uh, the bottom it will only touch it once so let's see what this looks like and i'm going to just paste this into into a graph over here so what we see over here is we see this this function and if i try to join this it goes like this and it it gets minimized at some point over here and as i mentioned we've got the the error term on the y axis and we've got the values of the estimate on the x axis and then we identify the place where the error term is minimized and that becomes our estimate for the the variable fuel capacity and this is essentially what happens in a regression as well we try to figure out the value of the estimate which minimizes the sum of squared error and there are better ways of doing it but this is how the algorithm works automatically as well it tries to estimate various points on this line it, it, it jumps from one point to the other and finally it converges at a point where it, it figures out that this is probably the, the point at which the error is minimized and all other points or all other values that I failed for fuel capacities estimate is only increasing the sum of squared errors on both terms and that's how any regression algorithm is going to converge and let's try and do this automatically in Excel and one easy way of doing this automatically in Excel is to use the solver so let's say I will use the solver function over here it says set objective as minimize the value of sum of squared error so I'm going to select the, uh, the cell G3 ask the solver to minimize this value and this this cell is running on a formula by changing the value of the estimate which is g3 again sorry uh, the uh, the value g4 needs to be minimized by changing the value of g3 and i can unclick this so it can be positive or negative it doesn't matter and let's solve for this so i know the currently the sum of squared error is 155000 but how much can i minimize it let's run it it's found a solution and at value of uh, 0.69 if I put in the value of 0 0.69 the sum of squared error is minimized to 7000 79 so somewhere over here 0 0.79 so if I hold the intercept constant at 10 the the best possible estimate for fuel capacity is 0 0.69 but this still may not be the best solution because we've kept the value of intercept constant supposing I change the value of intercept to I don't know 15 if we change it to 15 and then run the solver again again change the value let's see how much is the uh, the estimate now 
and we actually come to an even better sum of squared error it comes down to 5000 now we can't keep doing a you know changing each value one at a time what we can do solver is to change both of these values together and figure out the uh, the the convex function which minimizes the sum of squared error by changing the value of both intercept and fuel capacity so let's run the solver again by changing variable cells both intercept and fuel capacity click here press solve and there we go so it it sets the value of intercept at 39.6 the value of fuel capacity 0.87 and that gives us the minimum sum of squared errors and this gives us a regression equation without using regression at all but if i run a formal regression will i get the same equation let's try it out so this time instead of running solver and minimizing the sum of squared error which is a which is a very long about uh, sorry a long about way to uh, build a model let's go directly and build a model so let's go to data analysis i'm going to select regression press okay input y which is uh, the variable that you want to predict or fit which is uh, miles per gallon click labels the input range the independent variables it's only one variable in this case i'm going to select that all press okay new worksheet and there we have our model and uh, we get our coefficients for both the intercept and fuel capacity let's compare it with what solver gave us when we minimize the sum of squared errors and what you will see is it's almost the same so both solver and regression are giving us uh, results which are very 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 close to each other and in fact in regression as well the residual sum of squares or the error term is 1001 and that's what we got as well by running the solver over here so using solver and explicitly generating a sum of squared error function we can actually ask solver to minimize it and that is the same as running a simple regression and that's what i wanted to cover uh, uh, by what do we mean by uh, you know generating estimates what's the error term and and in fact what we're going to do is we're going to uh, apply the same technique on uh, the data set again and instead of just building a model with one independent variable let's try it with more variables so let's take everything from engine size all the way till fuel capacity and try and predict uh, the miles per gallon in this data set so again let's generate the estimates for all of this so initial estimates we need to set some initial estimates which our solver will then uh, then solve for so let's put everything as zero nice and simple then our predicted miles per gallon is going to be the linear equation make sure that if you're doing this in excel at your own computers you do the locking correctly so that you're multiplying uh, the estimate with the values and when you select the estimate it has to be locked the values when you select the values they don't need to be locked because the formula is need, is going to go down so plus let's see the estimate for width into the value of width plus the estimate for length into the value of length plus the estimate for curve weight into the value for curve weight plus the estimate for fuel capacity into the value of fuel capacity and there we have the predicted miles per gallon since everything was set to zero it's uh, the predicted is also zero and i'm making sure the formula is fine it's come down correctly the values are locked let's calculate the squared error term which is equal to the absolute uh, sorry the predicted minus the actual squared and that's the squared error and finally the sum of squared error is simply the sum of the squared error term for each of the rows <coughs> now what we can do is we can run solver which will uh, minimize the sum of squared error for this data set by changing these values and once it finds the values which are uh, or which generate the minimum sum of squared error by uh, changing these values we would have found our regression terms well hopefully so let's run solver and we want to set objective as value of r11 and we want to do it by changing the cells r4 to r 
R10. So just make sure this is correctly set. So this is over here. It's not getting selected there. So R11. By changing, everything looks fine. Press solve. And we have a solution where we get a regression equation term and the total sum of squared errors is 699. And how does that compare with the actual uh, regression if we run it? So let's run uh, the data analysis tool pack this time. Regression, we want to calculate or we want to set yields per gallon as the dependent variable. We want to set these as the independent variables. And there you go. Select labels, new worksheet, press OK. And there we have our regression equation over here. So let's compare this regression equation to the one which we got while running a solver. And what you will see is it's pretty close. It's not exactly the same, but pretty close. 33.90, 33.88 as the, the intercept. Engine size 0 0.9, minus 0 0.98, then minus 0 0.004, minus 0 0.018. So what you will see is that the, the differences are coming in the second or third decimal point, which is expected since... Uh, Solver is not the best algorithm uh, for generating these estimates. Now, <clears throat> now a few drawbacks uh, which we get when we're working with the, with the, uh, generating estimates on a convex function is that these functions are not always convex. Sometimes, for example, in our in our uh, in our study over here, we saw we saw this function and this looked to be a purely convex function, which would have one minima. And that's the only minima in uh, in the shape of this uh, this function. But sometimes what will happen is, uh, based on complex relationships, the variable may have one local minimum, which may not be the best possible minimum. There might exist another value of the estimate, which gives a global minimum. So if you're working in, or if you're uh, looking at the, the, the function in only these uh, particular value ranges, you may not know or your algorithm may converge to the local minimum over here and completely skip out a better solution which may exist. And that's a drawback which uh, which can happen in any kind of a regression model. Now, fortunately, non-convex error functions are not very common. And in, in most cases, uh, <clears throat> this relationship is known by the underlying business behavior or, or the, the financial problem that you're trying to solve. So, so in real life, we are unlikely to come across uh, these functions. And more than likely, these behavior are known beforehand that we actually go ahead and build the model. So this was uh, a short video on the intuition behind generating estimates and how that uh, actually happens uh, while uh, you know there are various algorithms around it. The key uh, behind it is trying to generate estimates which minimize the error term or the, uh, the function that we are trying to optimize. In my next few videos, we're going to be talking about logistic regression and what the logit, logit function that we are trying to, uh, to minimize over there.